So today I want to talk about the match pass system in eFootball and overall how dreadful and disappointing it is. So when the match pass first got implemented, uh, I do think it's a good system um, at the start. You know, there was three tiers, a regular, a value and a premium tier. It doesn't really make sense to me. Um, having three tiers, usually just most games have a free tier and a paid tier. I think Fortnite were the first game to really use a battle pass system and that's what they, uh, they do. But I, I do like that there is a free and uh, premium tier. But the, the issue with the, the first issue with the match pass is uh, you do get coins in the match pass. But look, you get 50 here, uh, 50 there, 150, and then the, I don't know if you get any more after that. So yeah, you get 150 coins, but the, that match pass costs 500 coins. Fortnite have it, so when you buy the match pass, you get enough V-Bucks back from that match pass. To buy it again so that when the next one comes out um you know it might sound like it's giving away free money but really it isn't because what happens is uh players will get the free match pass say after four or five free match passes they go okay now i can afford the paid tier for a second we'll just imagine there's only one paid tier and um, then they buy the paid tier and earn the rewards have a thousand coins left over okay or whatever Let's like say the next one costs uh, a thousand, but that's a month away. That's two months away. There's going to be a whole month now, two months where you have a thousand coins in your uh, account, which you're thinking is going to go for the match pass. That's quite the first reason you bought it. But you, you know yourself, when them thousand coin, coins are in your account, you're more likely to uh, spin on players. You're more likely to take a chance. It's called the uh, house money effect. Uh, basically, if you have um, money that was gifted to you, you're more likely to gamble it's uh, i did a bit of research in it for my uh, uh university degree like the, the the fact that konami are so stingy that they don't even give you the coins back in the value tier by the way they with a three tier system they can have a boat they can have both ways they can have it so the value pack you buy it back you get your 500 coins and then you kind of you know you make a profit or break even and then they can have the premium tier have it so that you get coins back from it, but you don't make the profit and you, you still have to buy it. You know, that'll target the whales because whales are just going to buy, you know, everything regardless. Um, I'm probably, I I was like that. I used to buy the match pass, the first four or five of them. I think I bought, I just bought them all. Um, but it was until, and this is the next issue I have with the match pass. It was until the addition of skill trainers. That's when I stopped uh, buying the match pass. So when they added skill trainers into the game, uh, it's probably probably one of my favorite things they added just because uh, there were so many cards that were always ruined by you know the lack of skills uh, you see my video the other day about Gerard Gerard doesn't have long range shooting one touch pass true pass and interception even though it's DMF but can we just go back to long range shooting Steven Gerard doesn't have long range shooting so Konami are prone to you know messing up um, the, the skills in a card like one of the first cards I got was Ronaldinho uh, and he never had double touch. Um, he, I know he, they give him double touch nowadays, but back in uh, the start of e football and back in the Pez games, uh, he would never get uh, double touch. So I bought him just because I love him in real life, but I bought him knowing he wasn't going to be the most meta uh, player, especially back then when I was less skilled and I was more reliant on double touch to uh, dribble by people. Um, like I, I knew um, he wouldn't be too effective, but then they added skill trainers and it changed it all. And I think it's overall a great addition to the game. The problem with skill trainers is you're capped every week to how much you, you can get, which isn't um, a major issue, but it's the cap is a bit low. It's is a three you get three a week, I think. You get usually you get uh, two in the online event and then one in the offline. I think this week you get actually four. I think there was two online events with skill trainer rewards. So there, there that's four, five, five max skill trainers get a week, and then obviously when the division resets, you get another. Uh, set of 10 assuming you're division one but that's every month or two like i don't know how long the seasons usually are um so like after when the first match pace match pass came out after um skill trainers i was like okay there's no skill trainers here the next one will have it it doesn't have it and we've had about four or five since then and the next point is we now have position trainers in the game and they're only giving us like one position trainer a week which is just dreadful because similar to the skill trainers you can get duplicates and you can't, it's random, you can't pick the, uh, the the skill trainer you want. I don't have an issue with the not being able to pick the skill you want or the position you want. Um, just because I know how uh, the psychology that uh, Nami are trying to prey on, on their customers. I say prey with negative connotations. I don't think there's 
massive uh, moral issues with it. It's it's just trying to it's trying to just loot box or uh, gam gamblify kind of every element of the game. Um, you know, logging in and getting your skill trainers and hoping you get someone good. Um, you know, it's 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 just kind of part of the part and parcel of uh, you know modern modern gaming. But the issue is the duplicates. Um, the duplicates cause you to feel terrible when you um you get your skill trainers. You get let's say you get ten skill trainers and uh, or position trainers, and you you want to get it on your player, and it's not that you don't get the skills you don't want. That's one issue. It's the skill. It's you have the skills you already have or the uh, position you already have. So it's a terrible system. It would be um mitigated if they offered skill trainers in the uh, match pass or the or, or the position trainers but they're kind of they're, i don't know why they don't hand them out it's free money i've always said i will 100 percent buy every match pass uh both tiers if there were skill trainers on offer like even if it was only like three skill trainers here and five skill trainers in the premium one like even though it's what's that two euro it's about two euro for uh per skill trader if i'm buying the premium one i still do it not because i think it's a great value for money deal it's just because i play this game a lot and it, i'm happy to invest in this game i do enjoy it um so i'd be kind of like a whale in that regard like i'm willing to spend the money um but they're just leaving money on the table and like obviously i don't care about uh how much money konami are making but if there's money to be made there in a way that the player base are happy with what they're buying like it's not like it's someone gambling on the the packs and they, you know, they regret the purchase after. It's someone who, Konami are offering you something. There's no strings attached. Like you're just getting what you're getting, and you pay the money. And they're just, they just don't want to take advantage of it. It's ridiculous. I think it's partly in the uh, idea that if they limit, if they don't sell the skill trainers, they know they have you hooked to get logged on every Monday and Thursday. To be honest, um, I do think that is uh, their strategy because the amount of people at this point now who uh, say to me, oh yeah, I don't really play the game anymore. I just log on on Monday and Thursday, complete the events and then log off. Um, so there is, uh, you know, that, that that is probably what they're looking at and they're saying, all right, every Monday and Thursday, we our player base uh, shoots up. We can't risk um, breaking the value of skill trainers uh, or position trainers on those getting those um items on those days because you know after a couple of weeks of being able to buy skill trainers position trainers people will have enough of them and then they won't feel the compulsion to log on for the event so that's probably the strategy they're going for but that's that's only because they're so lackluster in their overall content uh delivery uh elsewhere in the game like the fact that you play games in divisions and you get no rewards is ridiculous like Back in Pez, I used to grind GP um, and save it up and clear the agents with it. Now, they're not going to do that. It's because you can be entirely free to play and get every player you want by clearing the agents like that. So I understand why they're not doing that. But they should. GP is pretty valuable um, because of how inflated position... Uh, sorry. When you reset the player progression. And then the contract renewals now. But GP is uh, too valuable for the legacy transfers that... I will never renew a contract with GP or do a reset uh, progression. I'm always going to wait for the reset. But if they if they offered you, uh, let's say, 1k GP for every loss in divisions, 2k GP for every draw, and 3k for every win, suddenly, you know, I play, what, six, seven, eight games a day? Like, I'm, I'm going to rack up GP pretty quickly. Then I might actually, you know, maybe I will reset my player for 600k GP. At the moment, it's the biggest waste of GP you can ever do because what happens next week if the free reset comes back? But... You know, if, if we get GP every game, then it becomes, um, uh, you know, it becomes valuable. Another thing, if they do that, all right, what, what came out this week? Uh, Gerard, Trent, and David Seaman. Those GP, I'm saying we could get from divisions. Why not have it so if you have 10 or 11 player uh, English League players in your squad, you get a 1.5 boost to your GP earned. So if I have 11 uh, Premier League players in my, in my team this week, I'm getting, what's that, 5-5? Five, five, uh set no 3k four and a half k gp each game like it would just give people the incentive one to rotate their squads not use the same because i'm at the point where i have a lot of legends so i build my team based off the form every week but most of my team is legends you know it's a i don't know how to say it like uh you know it's a it's a it's not really a real problem it's not a real issue but uh you know it's an issue of having too many good cards i guess but um 
it would it would force it wouldn't force it would encourage people that, that's actually what you want to do you don't want to force people to do anything you want to encourage them encourage players to rotate their squads and also it would encourage players to spin more often they always offer i don't know if there's one at the moment uh i think is, is zico still out like they have a they have a japanese or they had it last week maybe a japanese league yeah this pack here all right i am never ever gonna spin for this pack i first off i don't know who this guy is and um, secondly I, I i do have zico already but let's just say, assume i don't have a zico he's just slower and he's just not as good as his like big time card so why would i ever spin for this for the events the events that take 45 minutes to clear and if i lose it's not a big issue like most people use the lone teams they don't even have good teams like like get, get out of here man but what happens if ever they release a pack like this and then suddenly that week the j league is the gp boost like then you know spinning for packs like these you can't like suddenly just becomes a little bit more valuable because you know if you're gonna if you're someone who likes to rotate their squads you're gonna be using that gp boost every week so let me use you know the the or not let me use but encourage me to use the the j league players like and what i'm complaining about is konami aren't effectively getting me to spend they're 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 at the point where there's, there's the only reason you'd spend on this game is for the nostalgia of using a player um if you you like them in real life my controller is connected one sec but yeah the only the only reason you'd spend is just because you like you the player in real life and you want to you want to kind of recreate the moments you had with them uh when you've seen them on uh, tv but because it's not like in fifa where every player you buy earns you further rewards to buy better players like i don't spin i only spin for packs i'm willing to clear the agent for so i'll only spin for a player if i know i'm gonna spend 150 euro and clear the box and that's just because i'm not buying them uh for my team uh, in terms of improving my team really i'm just buying them for the nostalgia but on fifa you're always changing your team you're always trying to find that little edge and that little tactical tweak like maybe if i get this player with this play style with this tactic now i'm gonna get a higher rank in foot champs and get more rewards and now i'll be able to uh you know finally work my way up to that ronaldinho i want but in this game like forget about it there's no, there's no need for any players especially since they added the the lone players in the events don't have an issue with that but it's it's just there's no incentive to use off uh there's no incentive to ever use a squad that's not your best current squad at the time because there's just no uh there's no variation in uh like team restrictions or like even i remember this example i used to back in pez i used to always play three star matchmaking or maybe four star i didn't like five star it felt too uh chaotic like when the stats get really high the game kind of gets wonky I don't think eFootball is actually too bad for that. Um, it is a little bit bad, but it's not It's not crazy. That's why I actually play this game. But uh, I remember there was a, a while ago, um, now this is a good while ago, maybe a year ago, there was a Van der Vaart that came out for Spurs and he was a force there. But he's, you know, he was still like in a normal legend box. So, you know, 150 players, 100 coins a player. Why would you spend 150 euro to get a four star AMF when you can just wait another week and get the five star one? Like... Okay, maybe Van der Vaart's your favorite player um, of all time, and that's why I go for him. But are Konami like like really just banking on the fact of the nostalgia factor? Because I'm at the position now where I have most of the legend I'd want. I have Ronaldinho. I didn't get the latest one. I didn't get the big time because why would I need to improve him? Like obviously the new ones are a bit better, but there's no need to improve my Ronaldinho. I don't earn rewards from my performance on the game it's all just playing for fun and i i don't have a problem with that uh, if i wanted that constant edge of progressing the team and earning rewards i could play fifa i just don't enjoy the gameplay i like the gameplay experience but i really love this game and a lot of the reasons people don't play it is because of the lack of content and it's 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 just really disappointing when i started this video it was literally just gonna be about the match pass but i've kind of veered off but another example iniesta uh, if a booster comes out i'm not gonna go for him because what's what's an extra three passing and two dribbling gonna do change like what's it gonna change nothing it's not gonna change anything for me like does it be, but if if every week i was earning you know rewards based on my performance i still probably wouldn't be value for money but it would it would become tempting and then you know konami are making more money there's more investment in the servers more investment in the content it's just a lack of ambition in the uh in the in the game from konami on their I, I don't know if they don't believe in the gameplay and they just don't push the content then. 
because I do feel like this is the best football game uh, we've ever had. Um, if you go back a couple of patches though, the moment the AI defense is too strong, whatever. But the the crook, the the fundamentals of this game, the be best dribbling ever in a football game. I, nothing has ever came close. Nothing. I don't see you getting much better either. Like I honestly, it's it's one of the best games I've ever played for dribbling, which is my favorite thing to do. But there's just a lack of one tactical depth and then two just content in general. Like if we go over to FIFA. Let's hope I can log into their servers because sometimes they're not the uh, they're not the greatest. So I've logged on to FIFA now. I don't play Ultimate Team too much. Maybe one game a week. Uh, I've played it for the first month a lot, but uh, I just don't like the gameplay too much. It's not uh, terrible, but it's just eFootball is so good. If eFootball was if we had the Pez twenty one gameplay, I thought it was too the dribbling was terrible. I'd be playing FIFA right now. But because eFootball, I like the gameplay. I'm playing eFootball. But log into FIFA. I've got objectives. So this, this is their match pass. There's no paid version. There should be a paid version if they want to make more money. They just choose not to. But look at the look at the rewards, all right? Badge, whatever. I don't care about the badges, TIFO. Some people do. I don't I don't care about them. You got pack here. Terrible pack. Pack here. You get a coin boost because you earn coins for every game. But that's... People don't even... People forget about that in FIFA. You don't even earn the coins. Because you get you get the coins and the packs to such a great amount elsewhere that you don't even think about the match coins. But then you get, uh, then you get a choice between three players here. Oh, sorry, this is a single player. So usually, they probably have a choice in the later one. Um, but more packs. Uh, another player. Okay, you know, there's no player choices in this match pass, but uh, usually there is. But uh, um, Oh, there is at the end here. But look, here's a pack, right? So you can get 20 83 plus rated players in one pack. That's very promising because I've opened a few of these or I've watched videos open a few of these because, because there's so many uh, special cards. You're, you're, you're likely to hit at least one special card in these packs. Probably won't be good. Probably be only worth 20, 40k, which is, you know, even a bad player can earn 100k a week in this game for the people who don't play AFC. Uh, you don't know what the like, market's like. But it, it's 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 not about what you're actually getting. It's about the promise and the excitement of what you could get. And that's why everyone's so addicted to skill trainers in eFootball, because every week you get, you know, a penalty specialist and captaincy, but you want the double touch, you want the true pass, and you know, it's the, it's the excitement about that. And also, you have a choice, 87 uh, times three pack. So three players, all 87 rated or above. So you've got a choice. Do you want to go wide and get a big pack and try hit a big player that way? Or do you want to cut out all the, the, the riffraff and just go for the high rated players and uh, try and get like, you know, a 90 rated icon? And then the last player, uh, the last option, sorry, when you complete the tier is... Um, okay, so it's uh, this. Yeah, I haven't I haven't played that. Uh, FIFA this season uh it's the same player but they just have uh is it different stats or different what is the difference oh it's it's gonna be four star skills five star weak foot five star skills four star weak foot and there you go that's another thing because um it's the same player with one small change but that's the um it's again it's the choice if you, the more choices you give players the more engaged they are in in the game based on the project they've done that one's called the ikea effect if you Basically, if you feel like you built something, you're more likely to value it. You value it higher, say. So you're, if you're gift, it's kind of similar to the thing I was talking about earlier. If you're given a team in uh, in FIFA, you don't you don't really you value it whatever. But if you build a team, you're gonna value it more. This is my team, I guess. There's a few loans in it, but you know I kind of have. Um, I patched this Van Dyke at the start of the game. I have a kind of a close attachment to him just because I got him at the start and he was he's been with me there the whole way. Um, I got Cannavaro from an Icon pack. Um, Roy Keane, I just like for the nostalgia. Uh, Bobby Charlton, I had to buy him because I was competing in the League of Ireland. We needed a League of Ireland player. So I bought him. And before I had to, I had to do that, I didn't really care for Bobby Charlton. But now you, I, I still haven't sold him, even though like you know, I could sell him and get the coins. So like, there's no building squads in eFootball anymore. You know what I mean? We've all got our main squad. It's all marginal improvements to the squads. And for what? I just there's no there's nothing. Uh, another point. SBCs. SBCs should be in eFootball. The the way the way the model works in eFootball is you open packs. In player of the week, you open three packs, and there's what is there eleven players in each player of the week? You're only looking for one or two. You get you get six useless ones, uh, you know, and you, you pack two of them or three of them. What can you do? You release them for GP and a contract renewal. Fair enough. Why can't we? Why can't we? You know, uh, submit them into basically an SBC and then get another spin. What? Like, why? Why? Like, what happens if? Imagine if 
instead of you know just releasing you could also choose to release them but instead of just releasing the player of the weeks what happens if you put in five player of the weeks and you get another spin on the current player of the week so you could let's say a terrible player of the week comes out terrible player of the week you you still might spin it now just because you know if you get those three player of the weeks and then next week a player of the week of Bappe, um you know whoever you want in Bappe, holland uh, van dyke messi all these players you'd want that comes out now those those useless player of the week you packed last week you can submit them into this uh you know player of the week sbc and now you've got another spin because if you miss them out on your three spins you've got another spin um another reason i think they don't clear the agent you don't let you clear the agent of the player of the weeks is to keep you hooked on the player of the weeks each week because if you don't get your mbappe um if you don't get your mbappe you have to wait the next time and you're constantly waiting for Thursday. Well, okay, what's the player of the week? If you can just clear it the first week, you'll never look at a player of the week again because you already have the players. So that that's why they don't let you clear the agent. Um but so that it's all about how much money you're spending. But if they let you kind of convert your uh useless players into um an SBC, I guess. I don't know what they'd call it any football, they'd come up weird some weird name. Um you're, you're, you'd probably just spin every week and save it and then you're spending money every week so even if you can kind of build up enough to clear a pack you've spent so much in the previous weeks that you've made they've konami have made the money so like I, it's it's a win-win it's a win for konami you're spending money every week to get the duplicates it's a win for you because you get the player you want so i just think it's uh i think it's ridiculous like it so i don't know it's like the packs why don't they just give you um do you remember when we used to get the logins? I we still get them, I guess. Um, I just haven't done them in a while because I don't do them often. But like, you remember they do a campaign where there's ten, um, there's ten legends in a pack, fifty players in it, and every day you get a login and you get a free spin. Like, put that in the match pass. And man, people would spend, people would buy the match pass every every time just for that. Like, even, forget about the skill trainers and the position trainer suggestion. They would just buy it for the free shot of a, at a legend, like. But like, like, and they could even have it. So in the value tier, there's ten legends and let's say twenty five players in the pack. So you can get you can get um a, a random player. But in the premium tier, it's literally just the legends in the pack. So you're guaranteed a legend. Like to be scummy, I I I wouldn't think that's a good value for our customers. But you know, Konami might look at that and go, all right, that's how we can milk more money from people. But like, I just I don't know. I think at this point, the people who are spending on like this game are based on like Twitch chat and YouTube chat are people who haven't been playing since the start. So they missed out on, you know, a Gerard or they missed out on the first Romarios or Neymars and they're just, they're just trying to get it, which is fair enough. Or it's just people who have just a lot of money and they don't mind spending every week for the marginal improvements. But then again, it goes back to the point of what are you improving? You're just going, you're just going into divisions with one extra dribble. Like, is it worth it? I don't think so. But like, if, it, if they're just relying on players who have who missed out on the packs the previous time to spin uh how long is that going to go on for like how many people how many people play this game already uh on mobile on mobile they surely can't grow the player base too much more they're already like top five mobile games in the world uh con the console market definitely can grow um but the co console players like the gameplay is good enough um maybe the recent patch which made the game worse was an attempt to you know it was basically the overall crux of the patch was they just increased ai defending made it more assisted and made it so interceptions happen more often so the game is constantly going back and forth so you know someone what they're trying to avoid is one player not having the ball for too long and um, maybe that's an attempt to get the casual player base but i've always said why e-football for the mobile market fair enough for the console market why are you trying to target the casual player base man you don't even have licensed kits liverpool don't have a kit the, the, the casuals don't care about like the, if you don't have the kits the casuals aren't showing up they're already they're just buying fifa so target the disenfranchised kind of players who are upset with the casual gameplay in fifa like why is ufl coming out why is goals coming out i think there's another one coming out too why are these games coming out? Because players are fed up and developers are trying to take it into their... Indie developers are looking at the situation and saying they're unhappy. Or the player, the football uh, simulator market uh, is unhappy with the products on offer. They feel like they're lacking control of, you know, the players are using their, you know, uh, theories of scripting, uh, you know, 
they can't build the teams the way they want to do it because they have to gamble basically. So they're coming in and making attempting to make a skill based experience with a uh, what they say is a friend a player friendly business model. I don't know if that's gonna be true or not. But uh yeah, so like why are Konami trying to target this casual player base? I don't know. Like the 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 free the free to play the free to play advantage is such a big advantage for Konami. They have it, but most free to play games would actually be more on the content side and then not worried about the gameplay. <laughs> Evil Ball is the opposite way, man. The, their gameplay is great, but their their content is, is is very lackluster. Like I'll just leave off on one point here. They, apparently, they were paying streamers like FIFA streamers to stream the game, which is a good thing. Not at this time. Not at the time when you're gonna stream. You're gonna pay this FIFA streamer to play the game. He's gonna show it off and go, "Oh, this game's cool. This is interesting." And then there's nothing for him to do because there's no content in the game. And then a week later, he's like, "Oh, do, why aren't you playing any football anymore?" Like, "Oh yeah, I haven't thought about it." I, I like there was there was nothing that grabbed me because when you play FIFA, you're looking at squad battles, you're looking at division rivals, you're looking at uh, foot champions, you're looking at draft, you're looking at. Uh, SBCs, you're looking at buying the players in the market, trading, you're looking at all these things, all these things, and that's not even including career mode and clubs. What's eFootball got? Online divisions and events? It's, uh, they just need to improve the content. I don't know. That's, uh, that's my piece. Thanks for listening. Let me know your thoughts in the comments because, uh, uh, I'd like to start a discussion.